the mother of all nightmares, a nuclear disaster contaminating an entire continent. Millions fated for fatal illness and the coming generations inheriting an unsafe Earth. Luckily, this did not happen in the event of the Chernobyl reactor failure. Thanks to the bravery of Alexei Anenenko, Valery Bezpalov, and Boris Barnanov, disaster was averted. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today we explore what would have happened if Chernobyl was never contained. In 1986, the number four reactor of Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded, having caught fire. It churned out a huge plume of radioactive elements into the atmosphere. The consequence of this was grave and huge. Over 100,000 people needed to be evacuated. So urgent was this evacuation, it took place in 36 hours. In the face of this huge fleeing mass, an entire new city was built and created called Slavucic, 50 kilometers to the east of Chernobyl. Pripyat, the nearby town, famously became a ghost town, overgrown and empty of life. An exclusion zone was created, spreading as large as 30 kilometers. A forest nearby of pine trees was soon labeled the Red Forest for the hue of red that came over them following the radiation. Around 10 kilometers of forest had to be destroyed in the initial event of the disaster. There has been a staggering human consequence. A report published in 2006, 20 years on from the disaster, marked the cost. 10,000 cases of thyroid cancer and 50,000 more expected are attributed to the radiation. 5,000 newborn deaths are attributed to Chernobyl and 10,000 birth deformities. Tragically, thousands who worked at Chernobyl were soon sick with radiation and tens of thousands died. A conservative scientific estimate attributes 50,000 excess cancer cases and half the number in deaths to Chernobyl. Heightened radiation was found all over Europe, attributed to the reactor failure's plume, most famously in Sweden, some 1,500 kilometers away. The overall estimated cost of the disaster is over 230 billion in economic damage. Yet Chernobyl was contained. A famous sarcophagus was built around the radiation site to stem the radiation and its spread. There is no doubt that had it not been, the consequences would only have multiplied. But exactly how and what the consequences would be is important to examine. Converse to all its disaster is the fact that the radioactivity did decay at a fast rate. In fact, within only a month, the overwhelming majority of the initial contamination had gone. According to several engineering professionals and those in the nuclear field, the outcome of Chernobyl leaving Europe becoming uninhabitable for centuries is not true. This is dramatization recently popularized by the brilliant HBO miniseries Chernobyl. The writers have admitted dramatic license was taken to suit the television format. You can witness this most graphically with the quite gory and visible radiation poisoning in the show. While the effects of radiation on human beings is terrible and high doses would form a harsh sunburn and skin peeling on the way to taking the person's life, it isn't the vision dramatized in the show. So where exactly does the fiction stop and the likely scientific projections begin? The main concern expressed about Chernobyl in TV depictions and otherwise is of radiation pouring across Europe. It turns out it might not be so simple as the global disaster often projected. The reality of radiation spreading across Europe is down to many different factors. For example, in terms of Europe becoming uninhabitable in the event of mass radiation, this is entirely dependent on how exactly the radiation could get to travel. In the eyes of those knowledgeable in radioactivity and its half-life, the reactor fuel at Chernobyl would be the most radioactive part. There would be gases such as krypton and xenon released into the air and other volatile elements like iodine and cesium along with it. But the most radioactive element, the most dangerous, would be the fuel solid or melted. 
in short, the most dangerous and deadly elements of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, would stay where they were, and the less so gases would be the potential danger for the rest of Europe. In calculations, the radiation in the landmass of Europe are used to project the worst case scenario. If every ounce of contamination was evenly spread across the 10 million square kilometers of Europe, the radioactivity would be less in one year than one can experience sitting in front of a laptop for an hour. Now, of course, this does not take into account an uneven spread of the contamination, and the radioactivity that did escape Chernobyl did not follow the law of averages. Let's not forget that increased radiation found in Sweden was the cause of Russia publicly confirming the disaster to the world. It's fair to say there likely would have been hot spots and clustering of the contamination depending on the weather. Surrounding Belarus, Poland, Moldova may well have seen the worst in the instance Chernobyl was not contained. Other very dangerous matters like food production would and could have taken a major hit to huge, huge consequence. Ultimately, the main concern over Chernobyl and its contamination of further Europe was not people but food, land, and wildlife. Food contamination and crop poisoning would have been a major, major issue. Radiation's power and harm simply go through the roof when ingested. It should be mentioned many food sources are still checked for radioactivity in Eastern Europe to this day. Eastern Bavaria, for example, advises its citizens not to eat picked mushrooms twice a year for this very reason. Though radioactivity isn't perhaps quite as simple as irradiated or not, regulations are a huge factor in how radiation and its risk is understood. Understandably, with no party or power looking to offer the public more radiation, most regulation is highly, highly conservative meaning its regulations are based around the risk of absolute worst-case scenarios. How does all this jargon translate in real life? Take the example of the hundreds and thousands of sheep in Britain that were taken to slaughter after having been considered unsafe to eat due to radiation from Chernobyl. Upon actual scientific examination, it was discovered that eating that irradiated meat daily for a year would not inflict more than the radiation of one X-ray on its consumer. Separating the fear and fiction surrounding nuclear and radiation is important for understanding the hypothetic of an uncontained Chernobyl. The image of Europe as a radioactive wasteland belongs to fiction predating Chernobyl, but the complications to the food chain and supply may well have harmed Europe on an unprecedented level. Safe thresholds of contamination and radiation in food are much lower than otherwise. In short, it's more easily turned into something harmful. To double down on this problem, radioactive isotopes can accumulate in the food chain. The clearest example of this is the cow that eats radioactive grass, which in turn produces irradiated meat and milk. The unraveling of this chain of consequences would have resulted in a huge global effort on the scale of war evacuation. Populations would have had to be moved and redeployed away from the most irradiated areas on a much larger scale. Food supplies and their chain would also need realigning and sourcing. Europe most likely would remain habitable in a vast majority, but the enormous effort to protect people from radiation would be a colossal ongoing effort of many years. If this was not or could not be a success, then Europe, in the face of an uncontained Chernobyl disaster, could face a major cancer crisis within the decade. Maybe the perfect tonic to the doom-mongering of an uncontained nuclear disaster is the state of Chernobyl now. As much as this may seem totally unbelievable, Chernobyl in the decades following has become a nature preserve. Not quite the images of hazmat suits and stark radioactive warning signs, huh? The Chernobyl exclusion zone is one of the most remarkable examples of how nature finds a way to regather and regroup in the event of its contamination. It's understood between 1987 and 1996, populations of roe deer, elk, and boar went through the roof. 
Even more fascinating, the influx of wolves and their growing populations actually began to cause neighboring farmers trouble. The research done in the area has inspired and fascinated the science community. It also lends strength to the views that public perception and media-built phobia of radiation may be somewhat inflated. The populations of animals and flora found in the CEZ are diverse and rare. Researchers have counted as many as 60 rare species of animals in Ukraine, including Eurasian lynx, black storks, and European bison. The total turnaround of the environment is only testament to the strength of Mother Nature. Previously surrounded with the platoons of pine trees, the forest that has grown since is more biodiverse. What has since grown in the CEZ following the disaster is more resistant to forest fires, the effects of climate change, and most impressively, better at protecting itself from the effects of carbon. The 30-kilometer zone, after 35 years, has seen its radioactivity drop to less than 1%. The only trade-off and long-term effect we can see from the initial radiation is the wolf population studied there. It appears natural selection leans toward high immune system activity and strong DNA control in the preserve. There is a real difference in lifespan between animals that acquire food off the zone than those that do not. But clearly the wolves in the zone are thriving and have been for decades now. This incredible and quite beautiful biological preserve stands as the strongest argument that a nuclear disaster doesn't instantly mean a barren wasteland from there on out. It can mean quite the opposite over time, ask the surrounding farmers of the CEZ. The idea of this video is not to dismiss or make light of the hideous cost of nuclear radiation. Chernobyl is one of the major man-made disasters of recorded history that cost many lives. There can be no doubt that greater losses and costs would be felt without the bravery of three incredible men. Yet, hopefully, between the revival scene of the exclusion zone over the passage of time and the realities of radioactive elements, it can be seen that an uncontained Chernobyl would not have spelled the end of Europe. It would have altered populations and food supplies and no doubt have upped illnesses. Its effects would have taken place over time, across generations and borders, not in one image or seismic event, but much change, hardship. Perhaps with a reality so layered and complicated, the imagined irradiated wasteland is digestible fiction to keep us wary of an inherently dangerous event. Thanks for watching Bizarre History. Be sure to subscribe for more tales from the past. See you next time.